When studying ecology, it's really important to look at not only how ecosystems naturally work, but then how we interact with ecosystems. So today, we're going to be looking at a few examples to answer this question. How have humans changed the environment? So for each example, we'll look at some causes and some effects. One of the most discussed effects of humans on the environment is climate change. Um, now, one thing I want to point out is that climate change is different from the greenhouse effect. Okay, so you've probably heard of the greenhouse effect right over here. Um, and this is a good thing. Basically, our atmosphere, which is about point, oh, let's stick it, there we go, point zero three percent carbon dioxide. Okay, so that's a zero point zero three percent carbon dioxide. Um, that carbon dioxide traps some of the heat. So basically, sun's energy comes in, yay, and that provides heat and all of the energy needed for photosynthesis. Um, so our sugars and everything, life on Earth. But carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, such as methane and water vapor, um, help to trap some of that heat as it radiates out back towards space. And that keeps the Earth at a livable temperature. So the cause of climate change is basically we are increasing the amount of atmospheric carbon dioxide. The two main culprits are the burning of fossil fuels, okay, so burning or combustion of fossil fuels. And fossil fuels are coal, oil, and natural gas. And we use these fuels to provide our electricity, um, transportation, a lot of things. Um, and then the second major cause is deforestation. Okay. Now what each of those does is that burning fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas that were formed from organisms that died millions of years ago, is that releases all of that carbon that's been trapped inside those organisms and underground up into the atmosphere. Deforestation, when you remove trees, remember trees take in carbon dioxide um, for photosynthesis. So when you remove those trees, you're removing a carbon sink. Also, um, oftentimes the trees are burned, okay? and that just releases more carbon dioxide. Now, some of the effects of climate change, okay, we have melting ice, which we can see here. I think about all of those images of polar bears swimming and drowning. We have rising sea levels. Um, we have um, habitat destruction as things start to change. You know, we're seeing all sorts of things like increased um, pollen and allergies. We're getting um, changing weather patterns. Okay, so more severe weather, which we've seen a lot of. Um, and the effects are kind of mind-boggling. So that's one way that humans are affecting the environment. So if we can reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that we emit, that's a great first step. Since one of the causes of climate change is deforestation, it's fitting to talk about that next. Humans have been cutting down trees for pretty much as long as we've been doing agriculture, so for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Um, if you think about where we are in eastern Massachusetts, if you were to look at how many trees there were in North Reading, you know, in, in Massachusetts as a state um, 200 years ago, there are actually more trees now than there were then. But that's just here. Um, in other parts of the world, including parts of America, trees are being cut down on a massive scale. So over here we can see some of the major causes of deforestation. Notice, and this is in the Amazon. Okay, so Amazon, largest rainforest um, in the world, mostly located in Brazil. Um, one thing that's really important to keep in mind about rainforests is that they are ve have very high productivity levels, which means they're supplying a lot of the oxygen that we breathe and a lot of the nutrients um, for a very diverse ecosystem. Notice that 60% of deforestation occurs for cattle ranches. 
What that means is that the trees are being cut down and then they're being burned, increasing climate change. They're not, it's not being used to collect wood for logging, paper, and things like that. Um, those do make up some small scale things, okay, logging, um, road construction, etc. And then agriculture, so making croplands is the other reason. So grazing land, so if we were to kind of write down the two major causes of deforestation, it's for grazing and for crops. The effects of deforestation, okay, as we mentioned before, increased carbon dioxide, we get habitat loss, which is going to decrease biodiversity. Okay, which is all of the different species that are living in an area, can get increased um, runoff of um, sediment and chemicals, etc., into um, bodies of water. We get more soil erosion. Okay. So those are some of the effects of deforestation. Another problem that's related to agriculture um, another environmental change, is desertification. The major cause of desertification is overgrazing of grasslands by animals. And desertification is mostly a problem in drier grasslands that border deserts already. Um, so when animals consume too many of the plants, et cetera, they, um, a lot of the nutrients get removed, and then you basically end up with just desert, very nutrient-poor soil. The effects of desertification is a loss of topsoil, okay, which means that the land is not going to be very useful for growing plants anymore. We get increased erosion of soil, and we get decreased biodiversity. Okay. So desertification is especially a problem um, in areas that border like the Sahara Desert, in a lot of Australia, which is mostly desert, and in large portions of Asia as well. Acid precipitation is one of our success stories um, because even though we've caused acid precipitation, we figured out a way to reduce acid precipitation. So if you recall our pH scale from 0 to 14, Seven in the middle, those are all the things that are um, neutral, like pure water. And then everything be below seven, okay, these are your acids. And then above seven, between seven and 14, are your bases. Okay. So acid precipitation is defined as anything with a pH of 5.6 or less. Um, so let's talk about the causes of acid precipitation. The major cause is coal burning power plants. Most of our electricity in the United States comes from coal burning power plants. Um, and what happens, we know that when you burn coal, it's a fossil fuel, so it releases carbon dioxide, causing climate change. It also releases sulfur dioxide, SO2. And what happens is as the sulfur dioxide rises into the atmosphere, it reacts with water, okay, the water vapors, and it forms H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. Um, another thing is that nitrous oxides from the burning of coal react with water vapor to form nitric acid. But let's just worry about sulfuric acid for now. So that causes the rain to have a lower pH value, and that's bad. Some of the effects is that, as we can see in this picture, can kills trees, okay, damages their leaves, their roots, it impacts the ability for trees to absorb nutrients from the soil, so that's all bad. Another thing that acid precipitation can do is it kills fish and other aquatic organisms. What we can see in this chart right here is that the um, this is just showing different aquatic organisms that might live in like a freshwater lake and their tolerance for 
different pH levels. So let's say the pH of a lake is normally about 6.5. Everything would live. It's pH 6, everything lives. If the pH drops below 6, let's say it drops down to 5.5, all of a sudden, clams okay, and snails can't survive in that lake anymore. If it drops down to a pH of 5.0, now we've also lost bass, we've lost crayfish, mayfly, and so on and so on. So frogs actually have the greatest tolerance to a variety of pH levels. Humans are also responsible for invasive species. These are species that are brought into an ecosystem in which they did not evolve. Um, this can happen at, by accident. So um, rats, for example, climbing onto a boat, and then they end up wherever the boat lands. Or remember we watched that video about the brown tree snake getting into Guam, and they're trying to prevent the snakes from getting onto the island of Hawaii with all those tree or those snake sniffing dogs um, because the brown tree snake can climb up into the wheel wells of planes and then wherever the plane lands the snake climbs out. Okay, so it can be an accident or sometimes species are introduced with a purpose. It could be as a decorative plant, could be as a pet. Um, there have been a lot of issues again with snakes in um, Florida and the Everglades where people get these, you know, like a Burmese python to have as a pet. I'm not sure why you would ever want that as a pet, but you get it as a pet, and then people don't, you know, for whatever reason, don't want the snake anymore. They just let out into the wild. Okay. So that's how an invasive species ends up somewhere. What happens is that because these in spe invasive species have, they didn't evolve, evolve in that area, right? So they have no natural um, predators, um, no natural parasites. A lot of times they don't have a lot of competition. Okay? In the new in the new ecosystem. So they can kind of take over the niches of other organisms. And where that brown tree snake is ending up it's able to climb up to the trees and eat all of the different eggs of various birds. And so Guam has lost multiple bird species. What we have right here, okay, this is the Asian longhorned beetle. And this is an invasive species in Massachusetts. Okay. And one of the effects is that it kills the trees. Okay, so we can see in this picture um, how the beetles eat away at all of the trees, all these little holes that we can see here, and then the only way to stop the spreading of the beetles is to chop down all of these trees that have been infected. So that's invasive species. It ties back into evolution. When things evolve together, okay, kind of all works out, but when you introduce something new, you can change things. Our last example of how humans have changed the environment is through overfishing. Um, the major reason that we are collecting more fish from the ocean is there's an increased demand for fish. Um, it's a great source of protein, and it's pretty healthy too. And especially when you think about where our human population has been growing the most, okay, in, for example, China and in India, areas where fish is a very popular item, particularly Asia, that's going to increase our demand even more. So remember, human population growth, if we were to graph it, is pretty much exponential. Okay, woo! Okay, so here's time. Here's the human population. Okay, so human population growth, exponential, so with that comes an exponential demand for fish. And we have better technology to catch more fish, but not a good thing. What's happening as we catch so many fish is that we're actually seeing, um, we're losing some fish species. We have a loss of various fish species. Um, some fish are just much smaller now because the big ones are all being, getting caught. Think about evolution. Um, and this can also disrupt the food web. Okay. So if you ever hear about um, 
fishing limits, which is a big deal here in Massachusetts and Eastern Massachusetts with um, a lot of people getting their livelihood from fishing on some connection to it when they talk about catch limits and things like that. It's to try to prevent overfishing because if you remove all of the tuna, for example, there's nothing left to reproduce.